Um, we're grateful for the weather holding out for us, but um, really what today is about, it, 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 it's, been a, it's been a journey. And uh, clearly this journey has a very uh, strong water feature about it. And the dedication of this fountain, which I think is, is quite extraordinary. We've looked into the history of fountains in the Peoria area, and it is our belief that there has not been a dedication of a figural fountain in Peoria in uh, over 100 years. The last one was in Low Lower Bradley Park around 1911 or 1912. We don't know what happened to that fountain. So uh, what an amazing thing to have this here. It's also an amazing journey because it wouldn't be here without the creation of this museum. And certainly we are grateful to the county, to the city, to all the donors that made this setting happen. I know I was talking with some of you earlier about uh, the placement of this fountain and all of the conversation that took place, but I'll save a little of that uh, for later. But I want to welcome you all here. I want to thank you for your dedication to this project. I want to thank you for uh, coming this afternoon for this momentous uh, dedication. Uh, but before I say a few more words, I'd like to bring up our chairman of the board, uh, Dave Ransberg. Would you give Dave a big hand, Dave? Nearly 13 years ago, when I met Ramona Gibbs, Moni, come on up here. And, and Moni has had uh, this, been on this journey for many, many years. And uh, I know that uh, she is delighted and we are delighted with the results. Uh, as I said before, there's quite a strong water theme here. But uh, I think I'll let Moni continue the story and, and uh, let her give you her perspective, and then I'll, I'll follow up with the conclusion. Let's give Moni a big hand. Moni, what a journey it's been. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Jim. Well, I'm, I'm absolutely thrilled to see Fountain Group in its place at the museum after a journey of 75 years beginning with my father's creation of the plaster model in Rome in 1937 to 38, and ending with the fountain's installation in the sculpture garden here. My father's career was brief, cut short when he was tragically killed in action in France in World War II at the age of 36. But Harry, as he was known by his family and friends, had started to sculpt when he was very young. A sculpture he did of an Indian on horseback when he was 16 showed what talent and promise he had at an early age. He was born in Rosemont, Pennsylvania, the son of George Gibbs, a well-known painter, illustrator, and author. My father studied sculpture first privately and then at the Pennsylvania Academy of the Fine Arts in Philadelphia, where he won a number of awards. In 1936, he won the Prix de Rome, or Rome Prize in sculpture, which was a fellowship typically awarded to one sculptor each year for two years of independent study at the American Academy in Rome. There were also winners in other fields of the arts and humanities. Part of the fellow's time there was spent on what were called collaborative problems, which involved teams working to find the best solution to a design challenge. In one such competition, my father, along with a landscape architect, created a model for a fountain with landscaping to be installed in the front courtyard of the American Academy. Their solution won that competition. It was a small clay sketch of a fountain that my father did for that competition, showing two mermen holding a large fish that provided the basis for our fountain here. He changed one merman to a mermaid, enlarged the small sketch to the size you see here, 
refined it, cast it in plaster, and named it Fountain Group. In 1938, at the end of his Rome stay, the plaster model made the journey by ship from Rome to Rosemont and took its place in the 100-year-old carriage house or barn on the family property. Over time, a leak in the roof over the work developed, which went unnoticed until 2006 when the last family resident of the property passed away. I couldn't bear to see the work destroyed because by now it had been damaged. So I found a conservator, Virginia Naudet of Norton Art Conservation in Philadelphia to save the work. First, it had to be moved from the barn and the same special equipment used for moving the Liberty Bell was used to place it in storage. It took some time, but Virginia brought the plaster model back to life. At the very end, she asked me to add a few texture marks where new plaster had obscured the old, and we both imagined that my father was somehow guiding us that day. While Fountain Group was in Philadelphia being conserved, and the Riverfront Museum was being planned, Sally Stone mentioned that it would be wonderful if we could bring the sculpture to the new museum. She sowed the seeds of this idea at a luncheon she gave, which Dr. William and Nancy Marshall attended. Sometime later, the Marshalls told me that they thought Fountain Group should come to the museum, and it was they who made that happen by funding the fountains casting in bronze by Marshall Svensson of True Form Productions in Chicago. Marshall was highly recommended by Preston Jackson, whose support I have greatly appreciated. Marshall's fine bronze casting brought the model to life yet again as a working fountain, which is what my father had envisioned so many years ago. In addition to his fountain here, my father has works at other museums a marble relief waiting for installation at the Philadelphia Museum of Art, a plaster relief at the Pennsylvania Academy of the Fine Arts, and his winning entry for the Prix de Rome at the Offner Center at Brook Green Gardens in South Carolina, as well as two bronze portrait medallions at the Franklin Inn Club of Philadelphia. He also executed a U.S. government commission under the section of Fine Arts during the New Deal for a sculptural mural entitled Welding for the Dundalk branch of the Baltimore, Maryland Post Office, and the mural remains there today. That post office is near a shipyard where warships were being built at that time, which is why my father chose welding as his subject. He exhibited in several Pennsylvania Academy of the Fine Arts annual exhibitions and was awarded a gold medal posthumously for a group of five sculptures shown there in 1945. He also had works in the Philadelphia Museum of Art International Sculpture Exhibition of 1940, the 1939 New York World's Fair, and in, 19, and, and in 2008, his bronze entitled Spirit of America was included in an exhibit entitled Man and Horse at Brook Green Gardens. You may ask how my father's connection to Peoria came about. He met my mother, Maureen Montgomery, a Peorian and fellow sculptor in 1937 in Rome, where she had gone to study sculpture in the museums and work in her own studio there. The sculptor Carl Millis of the Cranbrook Academy of Art in Michigan, where my mother taught at, in the Brookside School, had suggested that she go to Rome to further her art and she followed his advice. My parents met at a chamber music concert at the Academy. They were married in Peoria a year after they returned to the States while my father was teaching sculpture in the School of Architecture at Cornell. A few years later, my father, who was very patriotic, enlisted in the Army, and then my parents found that my mother was expecting. My mother returned home to Peoria while my father went to training camp and then overseas to war. Before leaving the U.S., he was able to come back to Peoria for my baptism when I was three months old. And I'd just like to add that his name is on our World War II memorial here. 
But in a way, his story does not end on a battlefield in France because the journey that his work, Fountain Group, has taken, in some measure, brings his ideas and his spirit back to life. And I hope that you and the rest of the community will learn about him and take him and his sculpture to your heart. My mother always wanted this fountain to be on the Peoria Riverfront. So I know she, as well as my father, would be very pleased today. With that in mind, and with great thanks to Bill and Nancy Marshall, and to the Peoria Riverfront Museum community of boards and staff, I'd like to dedicate Fountain Group to the memory of my parents, T. Harrison and Maureen Montgomery Gibbs, and for all those who work to make this museum a reality, please know that you have created the perfect place for my father's sculpture. At the end of a very long journey, it has found not only a new life, but the perfect home. That was wonderful. Moni, that's an amazing story. Thank you for sharing. You know, the, the river really does connect us to many things. I've often said that the river's why we're here. It brought the soil, it brought the agriculture, it brought all the great companies that have been here. And now certainly it's brought us this amazing, wonderful fountain. Let's give Moni Gibbs another hand of applause and to her parents as well. Really huge. We are so grateful. You know, just you close your eyes and listen to that amazing sound. Just think about how many people in the future will hear this and see this wonderful piece in this setting um, that we've created. I'd like to um, recognize Sally Stone for starting us down this path. Sally, please, I know, just put your hand up. Thank you, Sally. An amazing idea. Bill and Nancy Marshall, please. Thank you. Thank you for guiding us and helping us achieve this wonderful piece of work, which will certainly long outlast us. Marshall Svedson, Marshall, put your hand up in the air there. Marshall's the caster and the fabricator. Another great Peoria connection. Uh, Marshall is a student of Preston Jackson's and certainly learned a lot of great work from Preston, but Marshall, it's a work of art onto itself, especially for those of us that have been able to make the studio visits and see this great piece develop. You know, you're only as good as the people you get to work with and, and the staff that you have, so I'd like the, the board members to please raise their hands and the Peoria Riverfront Museum staff, please put your hands up. Great group of people keeping this all on course and making this happen. So here we are today, wonderful piece. What an exclamation point in our, in our sculpture garden. Very happy to share with you that we will host our first wedding here in May. I'm sure there'll be many more coming up. Um, having an MFA in, in contemporary sculpture myself, I have to say, what an amazing location for a piece of sculpture. All the people that will see it above, about 10 days ago when we were installing it, the kids' faces were at the window. On the other side of that is the Discovery World, people that can see it from above, and certainly as they walk in from Water Street. We are so grateful and so lucky to have this piece as part of our work. Please take some time and talk to Moni, talk to Bill and Nancy, talk to Marshall about the fountain while you're here. But from me to you, thank you for coming, thank you for being a part of history on this momentous day, and please do come back many, many times to not only enjoy this fountain, but this great setting that we've all had a part in creating. Thank you very much. You know, one more thing. One, one, one more thing, we're going to have a little ribbon cutting out in front. The chamber has uh, presented us their uh, amazing set of scissors. And so we're going to put a ribbon up and cut it, okay? Moni, would you join us for that, please? All right, can you put a hand on there, Dave? Just keep your hand away from there. Not there. Okay. All right. Put a hand in on there. We've got to get Nancy in here. All right. Ready? Here we go. Okay. One, two, three. All right. Yay. Wonderful. Okay. Oh, it's wonderful. Let's cut this and give everybody a piece of it. Okay. Let's do that. Let's do that. Okay. Just don't get me. 
There we go. <laughs> Pass them down. Can I a couple of yeah, I guess you yeah. have. Okay. That's a good Is thing. That it? That's hilarious. <laughs> Thank you. I think we all have. Thank you. There we go. Here's yours. Okay. Fountain. What, what, a, what a day. Okay. Yeah. They, yeah. Okay. They want the fountain. She wants the fountain. Oh, I think great. Oh, there you go. All right. And one, two, three. And one, two, three. You just walk in and all the work is done. And you don't have to worry about it anymore. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He did a wonderful job. Have you met Dave Ransford? This is Marshall Smith. Okay. Did, yeah. Yeah. No, I, he did a wonderful I job. Work he he cast the teeth and raised them together. And then smooth. Yeah, the plaster mold. And it was a, a, ru a rubber a rubber mold, which was, that came apart in 15 pieces. And then the plaster mold that, that, that supports the rubber was in 49 pieces. You know, for the reporters it's a huge here, job. I don't know, if somebody from the journal shop, you know, tell them the story. Because I think it's impressive. I mean, you go see it and they have no idea what it was. They somehow, it just mm -hmm. happened. Mm -hmm. and, sure. And your dad spent a lot of time doing the, 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 the cast originally. Yes. Oh, yeah. Plaster cast. Yes. That, that That's original right. mold would have been, would have been like extremely popular.
yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.